Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to part three of our talk about large adrenal masses, pearls, and pitfalls. And we left off before speaking a little bit about hemorrhage. Now, as we said, hemorrhage can be within a tumor, pheos being the most common primary tumor to bleed. But of course, hemorrhage is something we think about with anticoagulant therapy. Hemorrhage is something we think about in terms of trauma. But Let's talk about tumors more than anything else. Now, here's a patient with back pain, and patient came with right upper quadrant pain. Not sure what was going on, but you can see a large bleed in the region of the right adrenal gland, tracking around the adrenal and around the patient's kidneys. There's some higher density zones within it. You can see it here on the um, coronal, as well as here and here on the axial images. So we know we have a bleed, and we know we have an active bleed. So the question is, what are we really dealing with? Well, it could have been trauma. Remember, trauma is more common on the right side than the left. But when you see adrenal trauma, typically you're going to see other injuries to the kidney or liver. And of course, you'll have a history of trauma unless the patient fell down some stairs or they don't want to tell you about the trauma. The other problem with this case, of course, and if you take history of trauma off the table, is, is this due to anticoagulant therapy? Could this have been a myelolipoma that bled? Or could this be an underlying tumor like a pheochromocytoma or a metastasis? Sometimes we see metastasis to the adrenal bleed, and that may be the initial presentation of the patient's malignancy. We've found lung cancers and other tumors, but the presentation was right up a quadrant pain and primary adrenal bleed. When you look a little bit more closely at the venous images, you can see what appears to be within the bleed an enhancing lesion. So now we know there's a lesion here, there's a mass, this lesion probably ruptured, peripheral enhancement is actively bleeding. That's when you think about a pheochromocytoma. And we said the primary tumor that bleeds most frequently will be a pheo, but here's a good example of a cystic pheo that basically ruptured and bled. Bleeding and rupture of pheos is rare, but it's still the most common tumor. Adrenal cortical carcinomas occasionally can bleed, though it's rare. Other metastasis, renal cell melanoma, again, it's very, very rare. Uh, tumors, they get large, perhaps they can bleed, but we just don't see it all that commonly. But again, we also, in looking at the last case, need to think about myelolipomas. Maybe it was a lipid poor myelolipoma, or maybe once it bled, you can't see any fat. Metastases, of course, are a consideration, but if you have no primary tumor, you might want to look for one. ACC. But we also notice, and I'll show you other cases, adenomas and hemangiomas can bleed as well. So it is going to be a challenging diagnosis. Now, of course, the importance of the diagnosis cannot be over or underestimated because what happens is, surely if you have bilateral adrenal bleeds, that usually isn't in tumor. You don't get METs that both bleed, but it's anticoagulant therapy, it's stress. With bilateral adrenal bleeds, you have to worry because the patient can develop Addisonian crisis uh, and patient can die if you don't make the diagnosis. So most of the time, particularly when it's tumor related, it's unilateral. And even we know with trauma is usually unilateral and most commonly involving the patient's right adrenal. Here's another case, right upper quadrant pain. There's a large mass in the right adrenal gland and it's high density. This lesion with acute pain, the requisition said rule out pancreatitis, rule out acute cholecystitis. That's a common presentation, but it's a big mass. There's active bleeding in the mass. What could this be? It could be an adenoma, it could be a pheochromocytoma. We can go through the differential diagnosis. It's hard to be specific, you'll get lab values, you get a little bit more history. This was eventually resected, this was an adenoma that bled. Now I have to admit, we've seen a number of large masses that ended up being adenomas, and when you look at the path, the path showed areas of bleeding. So adenomas can bleed, and this was an acute bleed in an adenoma. But one of will have to admit, when you talk about bleeding, you don't typically think about adenomas. And here's another case. Patient presented vague symptoms, but it's large mass, over 10 centimeters, cystic. The periphery looks more solid. Could this be a necrotic tumor? You go through a large differential diagnosis. Could it be a pheo, perhaps, though we don't see 
any real hypervascular theos can be cystic with rim-like enhancement. This was a large hematoma at PATH, but it was a benign lesion. It was an adenoma. So one of the things to consider is how difficult the diagnosis can be. Most of the time, hematomas are oval or they're kind of egg-shaped. A hematoma on CT is a circular non-enhancing mass, greater than simple fluid attenuation, 50 to 90 Hounsfield units as opposed to 0 to 10. And occasionally, you'll see extravasation. Now, one thing I should mention, one of the causes of adrenal bleeds, patients have had angiography, and it can be a complication of that. Here's another example. Active bleeding, a 7 centimeter or so adrenal mass. This was eventually resected because it's bleeding. We didn't know the primary. We couldn't find the primary, but could this be an ACC? What's going on? The lesion had bled already. The lesion was resected laparoscopically. There were no features uh, that made you think malignancy. Again, bleeding can be due to a number of things, but this is impressive bleeding. Could it be a vascular malformation in there? Could it be anticoagulant therapy? We knew it wasn't. The patient did not have PEs. So we didn't have a really good history, but this was resected and was an adenoma that we found that was acutely bleeding. So it's interesting. And I showed you a few of these cases already. The first case I showed you was periadrenal infiltration, which is common. And I've showed you a case like the last one where the adrenal shape is maintained, but you see the high density. So there is a spectrum. When you see a lot of the changes around the gland, it means that the capsule typically has disrupted, that the bleed is more extensive, and the patient typically presents with more acute symptoms. Another example, here's a cystic lesion or low density. There's some rim thickening. There's also some areas of modeled enhancement and maybe some faint calcification. Again, we went through the differential. The patient was worked up for hormonal issues. There were none found. But the patient was symptomatic and no one felt comfortable doing nothing. This was removed laparoscopically, which is a very safe procedure. And patients with laparoscopic adrenalectomies are typically in the hospital for one day and not one week. And at PATH, this was a adenoma that had bled. Okay? So bleeding into adenomas is not that uncommon, but it's really a difficult diagnosis for us. And now I've seen a number of cases, so I think about it a little bit more. But if you ask me, can I just say this is an adenoma that bled, don't do anything? The answer is no. I can say, you know, it's something that bled, the, the hormones are all right, so it's not a pheo, that's our number one tumor. There's no primary tumor on chest or abdominal CT. So the most likely thing, it's a benign lesion that bled which in this case was an adenoma, very nicely shown on the multiple images. Now, chronic hemorrhage uh, can appear in many different ways. If you think about hemorrhage in any organ, be it kidney, be it liver, it often can basically go back to near normal. But in the adrenal, you'll often have calcification around the rim. So you can have reasonably large lesions with rim-like calcification. When I see a cystic adrenal lesion with rim calcification, although it can be a cyst like an epithelial cyst, I'm usually thinking about old hemorrhage. Also, the adrenal glands can become atrophic with dense calcification unilateral or bilateral when patients have prior hemorrhage. The appearance of the adrenal in those cases is small with calcification, kind of looks very similar to what you might expect to see with TB, where the adrenals are small that is, they're atrophic with calcification present. So again, a very important thing. Now the question is, if you have a bleed, I showed you a nice example where I could see the pheo, but there are no guidelines for determining when to follow the patient. This article makes the point, perhaps wait six to 12 weeks. If you don't wait long enough, you're not gonna be able to find a mass and things aren't gonna change. So typically you'll wait we usually wait about six weeks. We'll get a repeat CT scan, see any changes in size, but look for any underlying occult tumors. So some examples. When I see an oval lesion that's densely calcified, I'm always going to say it's an old hematoma. Malignancies don't calcify like that. Infection doesn't calcify like that. Um, again, we've seen a few cases of cysts with rim calcification, 
And I, yes, I've seen a couple with very dense calcification, but most of the time that's not the case. Now, other tumors, there are adrenal ganglion aromas. They arise from the neural crest tissue, arising in the adrenal medulla, but do not have any uh, specific hormone excretion, and usually they're incidental. The thing about adrenal ganglion aromas, they're often large, smooth, may contain calcification, but are not locally invasive. It's just a rare tumor. Again, on CT images, homogeneous, hypoattenuation, but it does enhance over time. People would like to say that if you have an adrenal lesion and it gets uh, brighter between the venous phase and the 15-minute uh, scan, like you were working it up for potential adenoma, you better think about a ganglion aroma, though we've often seen that as well with lymph angiomas. This article found that um, stippled intralesional calcifications occurred in half the cases. Now, we don't have a lot of cases, but my experience is calcification is uncommon. Patient left up a quadrant pain. The spleen looks large. Look at this large mass. It's cystic and it's solid. There is faint calcifications. It's pushing on the pancreas, but there is no evidence of any neovascularity. Look how large this lesion is. Could this be a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma? You bet it could be. Look how large it is. Modeled enhancement, some calcification. I would worry about an ACC. Um, it's not a bleed. It's not an adenoma. It's not going to be a metastasis. It's not a neuroblastoma. You start going through the differential diagnosis, and you've got to be thinking about adrenal cortical carcinoma. As you go from arterial to venous, areas of cystic change, very nicely seen, and cystic change is common in ACC due to tumor necrosis. Here you can see the cinematic rendering on your right, the areas of necrosis, the areas of cystic change within the tumor, very nicely seen. And again, at this point, I'm still favoring that this represents probably adrenal cortical carcinoma, big metastasis like from hepatoma, but I saw nothing in the chest, nothing in the abdomen. This was the isolated finding. So you're kind of stuck and this lesion is gonna come out. You can see how it splays the spleen, splays the vessels, pushes on the kidney, really nicely shown as you take away the mass and just so the surroundings on the cinematic rendering. Again, cinematic rendering for uh, preoperative planning. And this was resected, large mass, open surgery, impressive surgery. This was a ganglion aroma, a benign lesion. That's the largest I've seen. Here's a more typical case. It's a little bit lower density, some faint calcification. What else could this be? It could be a number of things. It could be an adenoma, perhaps. It's not a myelolipoma. I don't see any fat at all. Could it be a carcinoma? Less likely because it's smooth. In a patient with malignancy, I guess you could think about METs, but it's pretty low density. Here it's 51 on the uh, 60 second images. And you could see sharply marginated, maybe a little bit of rim enhancement. Could this be a lymphangioma? That would be a possibility. Had some faint calcification. This was resected and it was a ganglion aroma. Okay, solid mass, benign tumor. And again, you're not gonna make a living diagnosing these pre-surgery, but you need to consider that as a possibility, particularly with a larger lesion that doesn't look all that aggressive. Now, when we talk about malignant tumors, metastasis is going to be the most common, but then we think about primary adrenal cortical carcinoma, which we're always thinking about. I mentioned 10% of theos are malignant. We're going to speak about lymphoma, particularly primary lymphoma of the adrenals, where the only organ involved typically is the adrenal, or that's where the tumor starts. And if we were talking about younger patients, we would talk about neuroblastoma. The way back when, we once wrote an article about adult neuroblastomas. Now, adrenal cortical carcinomas can present with metastasis, bone pain, lung meds, flank pain, weight loss, very symptomatic. Or you can present with a syndrome. Cushing's is the most common syndrome with ACC, but essentially any hormonal uh, abnormality can be due to ACC as well. So it becomes very important. A small percentage of male patients present with signs of estrogen excess, 
Uh, in females, virilization results from excess androgens may accompany signs of excess cortisol. So remember, once you have some sort of hormonal abnormalities, particularly Cushing's, you have to worry about an ACC. There are many reasons for Cushing's, but you better be excluding a primary carcinoma. Now, when you look at all of the ACCs you're going to see, and classically, they're large. 70% are over 6 centimeters. Modeled enhancement, often very vascular. The lesions are not very homogeneous. They occasionally can contain fat, but as I mentioned, usually those are aggressive tumors which involve the perirenal space. In this article by Ahmed, attenuation value of more than 10 on non-contrast CT, um, you know, sensitivity but poor specificity. And again, when we talk about contrast enhancement, that's one of the things that's very common. The patient's ACCs are often vascular. But again, we can see other things that look like ACCs from the large adenoma I showed you before to meds, particularly from melanoma or for hepatoma. Pheos can be large. I'll show you lymphoma, though typically lymphoma is bilateral. ACC, less than 3% of time is going to be bilateral. And of course, lesions that bleed we showed you some benign lesions. We showed you malignant lesions, including pheochromocytoma. So classically, large mass, irregular vascularity, neovascularity, 15 centimeters plus, pushing on the liver, pushing on the kidney. The biggest challenge you may have is determining where the lesion arose from. This is a classic, classic adrenal cortical carcinoma. Use the MIP imaging. The MIP imaging very nicely shows you the neovascularity in this case. When you see neovascularity, it's a malignancy, and at this size, ACC is your best bet. Another example, ACC large, pushing on liver, pushing on kidney. It's necrotic. There's areas of neovascularity. There's areas of cystic space. The tumor is very necrotic. I mentioned before, ACCs are typically unilateral. Less than 3% of the time, they are bilateral. But again, aggressive vessels, central necrosis. What else could this be? If I said pheo, a cystic pheo, I guess I would throw that in there. A met from hepatoma, but then you would need to see a primary liver lesion. And again, here it is nicely on the sagittal views. Again, what you're going to look for when you stage these patients, you're going to look for renal vein involvement as well as IVC involvement. Now, a lot of the patients with adrenal cortical carcinoma are female and often in the 30s. And here's a good example of a patient with ulcerative colitis. If you look carefully, the patient has thickening of the descending colon. That's why the study was done. They were looking for complications. But then that we found this large left adrenal mass, faint calcification, areas of vascularity. Look how large the mass is. There are nodes nearby, immediately between the aorta and the mass. This is a primary tumor in the age group with thinking about an ACC. There's the tumor necrosis as well as the neovascularity on the volume rendered views. And again, irregular, solid areas of necrosis, classic for primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. And again, the presentation was flank pain, which everyone figured was related to a relapse of the patient's ulcerative colitis but it was really the patient's ACC. Here it is on the cinematic rendering. The redder area is necrosis. Cinematic rendering is very good at creating texture maps, liver spleen, how the adrenal looks differently. And again, I mentioned at the beginning of the talk that one of the things we're trying to do is see if we can learn more about tumors based on their signature with cinematic rendering, which you can see here as well. Now, when you talk about adrenal cortical carcinoma, I mentioned uh, the fact that we potentially can use cinematic rendering for looking at this, and I think it will be of value. Now, not every case of primary ACC is irregular or invasive. Here's a large left adrenal mass, and so it has prominent vascularity. So you're thinking about ACC, although it's very well defined. This is the reason you wouldn't want to biopsy this mass. You would want to go in, resected, take the nodes out, and try to have a negative margin when you leave. There is one chemotherapy, mitotain, very toxic. Results aren't that great. Um, 
radiation therapy is not helpful with primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. So unless you can get the tumor out with no spread, the patient's going to have a limited lifespan. So it's very critical. Again, I find the MIP imaging, in addition to the cinematic helpful, you see some of the neovascularity in the tumor, which is a very nice uh, finding. Here it is again on the uh, image on your left. And again, central necrosis. So these tumors are often necrotic as they get larger. Another case, left adrenal mass, left parioidic nodes. Yes, if you looked at this, you can say it's the kidney, but the kidney looks fine. I'll show you in a moment. There's the spleen. The, these adrenal masses often abut adjacent organs. They don't typically, but they can invade, but they're typically simply abutting. And here it is on the axial and then coronal view. And you can see presentations are variable from weight loss to pain due to metastasis like bone or hemoptysis lung, or just flank pain. Large mass, prominent neovascularity, adrenal cortical carcinoma, very nicely shown. And here's just a few additional images giving you a feel of the relationship. It's interesting how the adrenal masses like ACC push on the kidney, in this case the left kidney, but typically simply abut but do not invade. And as you go from the arterial to venous, the areas of central necrosis in the tumor are a bit better seen, even better seen as you look at the cinematic rendering, very nicely shown there and there as well. So a really, really good example of a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. Another patient with flank pain, it looks similar, right? Big mass, necrosis, some vascularity, solid and cystic. The tumor outgrows the blood supply, pushes on the kidney. It's not a renal mass. The coronal views make it easier for you to determine it's not renal. And of course, when it's on the right side, you got to make certain that you're not confusing an exophytic hepatic mass like hepatoma or cholangio, but typically it's not a problem. Now, these adrenal masses can invade the kidney, but in this case, when the surgeon goes in, the border was clear. And typically, just because it's large enough, it's going to be compressing the patient's kidney. Here it is from the sagittal views. And again, from the coronal view, I think this shows nicely the importance of the multiplanar as well as the 3D in defining the extent of tumor and really being certain specifically what you're dealing with. Another patient, right-sided pain, again, rule out renal pathology. So it was a non-contrast scan. They thought it was a stone, but there's a solid mass in the right adrenal measuring about seven centimeters. There it is non-contrast as well. Could it be a big adenoma? Lipid poor myelolipoma, that's probably unlikely. There's no fat at all. Could it be an ACC? Could it be a MET? But the patient had no primary tumor. Could it be a typical adenoma? When you give IV contrast, the lesion enhances, but is not very vascular. Doesn't have enhancement like a myelolipoma. Doesn't have enhancement like hemangioma, which are uncommon tumors anyway. Doesn't have a look of lymphangioma as there's no calcification in the periphery. There are a few faint calcifications. And you're kind of stuck. Could this be an adenoma that previously bled? I showed you some examples. That's a consideration. But then when you go to the later phase, you can see the left adrenal looks good, but the right has central necrosis. Now, if you had an adenoma that was large that centrally bled, I guess you can make a case for that. But in this case, you really have to worry central necrosis, some vascularity, large mass. This was a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. The necrosis nicely shown on the volume rendering views. So again, you can see that the cases I just showed you, the only thing they really have in common, or one of the things they have in common, is a large size. But the enhancement, some had neovascularity, some did not. Some had necrosis, some did not. So again, when you look at this large series of tumors from the Mayo Clinic, adrenal cortical carcinomas were only 13%. Now that's probably a high 13% in the sense that a lot of patients with ACC are referred to the Mayo Clinic surgeon, so that would increase their percentages, but it's still going to be a relatively small number. Now, the other thing in terms of malignancy is going to be metastasis. Let's do this. Let's come back, talk about metastasis, both the appearance and both what primary tumors typically will go to the adrenal. And we'll do this after a few minute break.
See you soon. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.